In a class of 20 students, 16 play soccer, 12 play hockey, and 2 do not play any of the two games. How many students play only hockey? This is a two-set problem. So we will first represent the information we have here on a Venn diagram. I'll use the rectangle to represent the number of students in the class. So U, which will represent the number of students in the class, is equal to 20. The question says that 16 of them play soccer. I'll use this circle to represent those who play soccer. So 16 play soccer. And 12 play hockey. I'll use this circle to represent those who play hockey. We have the number of students who play hockey to be 12 here. Let's assume that x is equal to the number of students who play both games so this region will be x if here is x then it means that the number of students who play soccer only will be 16 minus x and the number of students who play hockey only will be 12 minus x the question tells us that two students do not play any of the two games so it means that x union h complement is 2 so you indicate that here. When we add everything in the Venn diagram together, it will give us the universal set. So it means that 16 minus x plus x plus 12 minus x plus 2 is equal to the universal set, which is 20. This will give us 30 minus x is equal to 20. And x will be equal to 30 minus 20. 30 minus 20 is 10, so x is equal to 10. So what it means is that the number of students who play both games are 10. We are looking for the number of students who play only hockey. From our Venn diagram, we can see that the number of students who play only hockey are 12 minus x. And we have found out that x is equal to 10. So it means that the number of students who play hockey only will be 12 minus 10. 12 minus 10 will give us 2. So what it means is that two students play only hockey. The interquartile range of a distribution is 7. If the 25th percentile is 16, find the upper quartile. This is a multiple choice question and so we will solve the question and after that we will pick the correct option. The question says that the interquartile range of a distribution is 7 and the 25th percentile is 16. We are going to use this information to find the upper quartile. In a distribution, the 25th percentile is the same as the lower quartile. Here, the question tells us that the 25th percentile is 16. So if the 25th percentile is 16, then we can also say that the lower quartile is 16 because the lower quartile is equal to the 25th percentile, which is 16. And so the lower quartile is 16. The interquartile range of a distribution is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. From here, if we make the upper quartile the subject, we are going to have the upper quartile is equal to the interquartile range plus the lower quartile. The question tells us that the interquartile range is 7. The lower quartile is 16. And so the upper quartile will be equal to the interquartile range, which is 7, plus the lower quartile, which is 16. And this will give us 23. So it means that the upper quartile of the distribution is 23. When we look through the options, you can see that the correct option is B. A cyclist covers 900 meters in 5 minutes. What is his average speed in kilometers per hour? This is a multiple choice question and so we will solve the question and after that we will pick the correct option. The distance covered by the cyclist is 900 meters. 
and the time it used to cover this distance is 5 minutes. The question wants us to find the average speed in kilometers per hour. To do that, we will need the distance in kilometers and the time in hours. We know that average speed is equal to distance divided by time. To get the average speed in kilometers per hour, we will have to convert 900 meters to kilometers and 5 minutes to hours. Let's do that. We know that the rate of conversion between meters and kilometers is 1000 meters is equal to 1 kilometer. If 1000 meters gives us 1 kilometer, 900 meters, will it give us more or less? As you can clearly see, if 1000 meters is giving us 1 kilometer, 900 meters will obviously give us less. If less, more divide. So 1000 meters will be the denominator and 900 meters will be the numerator. So you have 900 meters divided by 1000 meters times 1 kilometer. Meters and meters will cancel. 900 divided by 1000 times 1 kilometer will give us 0 0.9 kilometers. So when we convert 900 meters to kilometers, we are going to have 0 0.9 kilometers. Let's look at the time. We are converting from minutes to hours. The rate of conversion between minutes and hours is 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. If 60 minutes is giving us 1 hour, 5 minutes, will it be more than 1 hour or less than 1 hour? It will obviously be less than 1 hour. If less, more divide. So it means that 60 minutes will be the denominator and 5 minutes will be the numerator. So you have 5 minutes divided by 60 minutes times 1 hour. Minutes and minutes will cancel and so you have 5 divided by 60 times 1 hour and this will give us 1 divided by 12 hours. So we now have the distance in kilometers and the time in hours. So the average speed will be equal to the distance which is 0 0.9 kilometers divided by the time which is 1 divided by 12 hours. 0 0.9 divided by 1 divided by 12 will give us 10.8. The unit will be kilometers per hour. So it means that the average speed of the cyclist is 10.8 kilometers per hour. When we look through the options, we can see that the correct option is A, 10.8. This is a multiple choice question and so we will solve the question and after that we will pick the correct option. From indices we know that if we have a divided by b exponent negative x divided by y it can be written as b divided by a exponent x divided by y. So the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator and then the negative on the exponent will be positive. If we apply this to the first one, then 16 divided by 81 exponent negative 3 divided by 4 is the same as 81 divided by 16 exponent 3 divided by 4. It is being multiplied by 100 divided by 81 exponent 1 divided by 2. 81 can be written in index form as 3 exponent 4. And 16 can also be written in index form as 2 exponent 4. 100 can be written in index form as 10 exponent 2. And 81 can be written in index form as 9 exponent 2. Once again, we know from indices that if we have a exponent x divided by b exponent x, it can be written as a divided by b exponent x. So in the same way, if we have 3 exponent 4 
divided by 2 exponent 4. It can be written as 3 divided by 2 exponent 4. But don't forget we already have 3 exponent 4 here. So the 4 will multiply the 3 exponent 4 that was already there. And in the same way, 10 exponent 2 divided by 9 exponent 2 can also be written as 10 divided by 9 exponent 2. But we already have half here. So it will be 2 times half. When we do this, we can see that 4 and 4 cancel here to 2 and 2 will cancel. And so we'll be left with 3 divided by 2 exponent 3 times 10 divided by 9 exponent 1. We know that if we have a divided by b exponent x, it can be written as a exponent x divided by b exponent x. So you give the exponent to the numerator and then you give it to the denominator. If we apply that here, then we are going to have 3 exponent 3, which will give us 27, divided by 2 exponent 3, which will give us 8 times 10 exponent 1, which will give us 10, divided by 9 exponent 1, which will give us 9. 27 divided by 8 times 10 divided by 9 will give us 15 divided by 4. So when we simplify this, we are going to have 15 divided by 4. When we look through the options given to us, we can see that the correct one is C. In the diagram, the line PQ is a tangent to the circle x y z w angle y w q is 71 degrees and angle w z y s m find the value of m this is a multiple choice question and so you solve the question and after that we will pick the correct option one of the theorems of a circle is that the angle between a chord and a tangent at the end of the chord is equal to the angle subtended by the chord in the alternate segment. In this diagram, we have the chord WY. This chord creates two segments. We have the major segment here and the minor segment here. We can also see that there is an angle formed between the tangent PQ and the chord WY. That angle is 71 degrees. The theorem says that the angle between a chord and the tangent at the end of the chord, that is this angle here, is equal to the angle subtended by the chord in the alternate segment. The 71 degrees we have here is in this segment. So the alternate segment will be the major segment here. The theorem says the angle between the chord and the tangent, that is the 71 degrees angle, is equal to the angle that the chord WY will subtend at the circumference in this segment. And that angle is WXY. So it means that angle YXW, YXW, that is the angle we have here, is equal to angle YW. Q, which is the 71 degrees angle we have here. So angle YXW is also 71 degrees. Another theorem of a circle is that the sum of the angles a chord substance at the circumference of opposite segments of a circle is equal to 180 degrees. We have the chord WY. As we have already seen, this chord WY divides the circle into two segments. We have the minor segment here and the major segment here. The theorem says that the sum of the angles that a chord substance at the circumference in opposite segments of the circle are equal. So the chord WY substance this 71 degrees angle here at the circumference in this segment and the same chord WY substance this angle here M 
at the circumference in this segment. The theorem says if we add these two angles together, we will have 180 degrees. So 71 degrees plus M is equal to 180 degrees. It means that M is equal to 180 degrees minus 71 degrees. And this will give us 109. So M is equal to 109 degrees. When we look through the options given to us, we can see that the correct one is C.